My name is Gregory Kallenberg. My background is in journalism. Uh, I've written for the Austin American Statesman, New York Times, Esquire Magazine, a lot of other publications. Uh, in 2006, I turned my focus on to documentary filmmaking. In 2008, I was sitting in this little cafe called Strawn's, and um, I overheard a conversation by these two farmer types about this huge natural gas find called the Hainesville Shale. I immediately turned my camera on it and found this incredible story that became the documentary Hainesville. When we first uh, released Hainesville, we were especially lucky because we got it into one of the largest film festivals in the country, which is South by Southwest in Austin. From there, things kind of took off on us. I mean, we found ourselves playing for everyone from environmental festivals to industry conferences to universities. We showed it in front of communities. We showed it all over, and we saw this tremendously positive response to it. During the time when we were taking the film around the country, we really did see something amazing. I mean, granted, there was this polarization where people were totally split on the issue, but what we saw was, was this larger group in the middle that were starting to sort of collect around the film and the issue of energy. Running into people who didn't understand like where energy came from or how much we used of it was a common occurrence. All those things were things that people were coming into the theater and wanting to discuss. And that's when I got one of the most exciting calls I think I've ever gotten, which was an invitation from TEDx uh, in Austin to present this idea of what this film is and, and sort of the idea of what the film has become. You know, if you're going to speak at TEDx, you need a great idea. And so I came back to my team and really started working on what it was I was going to present. And what we all decided was to present this idea of these people, this group that had sort of collected around Haynesville, you know, these, these people who had come to learn more about energy, to learn more about how they can help sort of bring about a cleaner energy future. And internally, we called this group the rational middle. And the rational middle wasn't sort of these extreme ends of the argument. They weren't the people behind their barricades, you know, heaving Molotov cocktails and insults at each other. This is a group that was willing to sit down, to compromise, to look at sort of the risk and the rewards of energy, and to start working on a cleaner energy future. In the end, we are gonna be the ones that are gonna be the primary architects. We are the ones that are gonna change the trajectory of the energy future. So after TED, um, we sort of collected ourselves as a production team. We thought, what was next? What was next for the rational middle? I mean, this had had such a tremendous response thus far. It had really sort of brought all these people to the issue who had never been there before, but we were only doing it about 200 to 400 people at a time. How could we sort of go big with this rational middle concept and do it in a way that it actually could have impact and maybe even start to change the way that everyone started to look at energy? What we came up with was this concept that we call the Rational Middle Energy Series. And what the Rational Middle Energy Series would be is a series of short films that would help build that foundation of information for these groups of people who really need to know, want to know, what energy is about, where it comes from, why we need a cleaner energy future, and how to get there. So our idea was to go back and interview, talk to, the world's leading energy experts. I mean, I'm talking academics, environmentalists, and pundits. These experts would really help us communicate to these people how to sort of gather around energy in such a way that it will really help us bring about and manifest a cleaner energy future. And then we were invited to the Aspen Ideas Festival. And if you've never been to the Aspen Ideas Festival, it's one of the greatest gatherings of some of the most astounding minds in the world. And it's in subjects ranging from philosophy to architecture to energy. And that's where we met, among other energy minds, Marvin Odom, who's the president of Shell. And the way I remember it is I was flying on my way to Aspen, and one of the, the people on the staff had handed me a, a, a DVD and said, here, you ought to watch this. And it was the, the independent film, Haynesville. It provided what I thought was a very different, very balanced view and something I thought was very important. And so Gregory had come up with this idea that he calls the rational middle. And it made absolutely perfect sense to me. After Aspen, we were invited down to Houston to pitch our idea to Shell. I, I had this natural trepidation of being sponsored by a huge energy company. So we laid the ground rules out from the very beginning, which was that we were going to be completely transparent about who was sponsoring the Rational Metal Energy Series. And then that I was going to get complete creative and informational control over the subject matter. 
way it came to me was the idea is that Gregory can do this in a very independent fashion, which, you know, given just a few seconds thought, also made perfect sense to me, because this has to be told from an independent point of view. It can't be influenced by a company like Shell, because then it won't have the credibility that it really needs. So it was decided Shell would fund the Rational Metal Energy Series, and the ground rules were all agreed to. I mean, we would work outside of the company, so the company had no influence in what we were going to be doing, and we had full creative and informational control over the films themselves. Now this, I think this series is incredibly important, not just because of what someone might see in their backyard or happening in, in their neighborhood. I actually start thinking about this at an absolute global level. So if we think about the fact that the world has seven billion people in it today, and there's a growing middle class around the world where the consumption of energy is going to escalate dramatically over the next half century. The issue of energy and the challenge of the cleaner energy future is one that is incredibly important to me and my team. The creation of the Rational Metal Energy Series was an amazing opportunity. This ability to bring this issue to the people in such an easy, accessible, and open way is something that is an incredible opportunity. But this is really just the beginning. I think there's a lot that's working against a rational middle type concept having a huge impact. And, and when I say that, immediately what I'm thinking is, you know, think of the political situation in Washington, you know, coming up on this election year, you know, Republicans all the way to this side, Democrats all the way to this side, Everybody that's really thinking, know the right, knowing the right answer is somewhere in the middle, but that's not where the dialogue is. But I think, I really do deeply believe that the people in this country are much smarter than that. And that when something like the rational middle is available, and they can see it, and they can understand it, and they can understand that it's balanced and real, then they can take that, and they can take it back to their politicians, whoever, and say, this is what I believe, and this is what I want to happen, and this is what I want you to make happen. That's, that, I think, is the real opportunity here. What I hope people take away from the Rational Metal Energy Series is not just information, and it's not just wow facts. I want people to take away a different way of thinking. I want people to realize that we have to work on this together. We have to compromise on what's there, how we use it, and what we use in the future as far as energy is concerned. What I want the Rational Metal Energy Series to do is to collect people in such a way so that we start working on an energy solution and we start doing it together. But we're not going to do it unless we work together. We're not going to do it unless we break this stasis and we come out of these places on one side and the other, meet in the Rational Middle and sit at this table and look each other in the eye and listen. And together we will decide where we are as an energy nation where we want to go, and most importantly, how we intend to get there. Thank you.